The Mile High Flood District's Detention Basin Design Workbook is intended to provide a flexible user interface that can help to size a wide variety of preliminary design configurations, as well as evaluate existing facilities by providing user overrides. My name is Derek Rapp, and in this video, I'm going to work through an example that focuses on hydrology overrides within the workbook, which allow the user to replace the built-in CUHP pre-development peak flows and inflow hydrographs. If you are new to the detention workbook, I would suggest you watch the overview and example videos first, as those videos walk you through the entire workbook. Override of the default workbook hydrology may be justified for several reasons. One reason may be that the tributary watershed is already developed and can't easily be described by a single subcatchment. For example, there may be several different types of land use within the watershed with highly variable slopes and multiple flow paths. There may also be an existing conveyance system upstream, including channels, pipes, and or other detention facilities that would significantly alter the watershed runoff. Another reason may be that the project requires the use of existing regulatory hydrology that was developed using a different software program. Regardless of the reason, this video is intended to help demonstrate the hydrology override options. The video is broken into several chapters as seen here in the table of contents. If you move the cursor over the video timeline at the bottom of the screen, the various chapter segments are visible. In this example, we are going to evaluate a watershed that was broken into three tributary subcatchments based on different land use characteristics and an open channel conveyance system. Runoff hydrographs for the three individual subcatchments were generated using CUHP for the two year through 500 year design storms. The hydrographs were then routed through open channels using EPA SWIM to determine the combined inflow hydrographs for each design storm at the proposed detention basin location. This example will demonstrate how to incorporate the CUHP SWIM hydrology results into the detention workbook. First, I will demonstrate the process of obtaining the combined runoff hydrograph from the EPA SWIM model for the 100-year future conditions model. The inflow hydrograph is obtained by clicking Report, Table, by Object. Then we select Nodes, Total Inflow, and add node 310 where the detention basin will be located. The resulting table can then be copied to the clipboard and saved in a separate workbook for easy access. Now we will switch over to the detention workbook and start by incorporating the watershed information. As you are probably aware, the detention workbook requires information for a single watershed and does not allow for direct input of multiple subcatchments. However, since we are going to be providing user overrides for the watershed hydrology later, we can just provide an area weighted composite for the total watershed here. We will be evaluating an extended detention basin in this example, which has a default water quality capture volume drain time of 40 hours. The watershed area is the total combined area of the three individual subcatchments. The watershed length and length to centroid are determined based on the overall watershed flow path, and in this example, take into account the watershed length for the upstream subcatchment plus the open channel length to the proposed detention basin. The watershed slope, percent imperviousness, and soil type are based on area weighted values from the three subcatchments. Next, we will demonstrate how to override the default rainfall depths to be consistent with the values used in the CUHP swim models. Other reasons to override rainfall depths may include that the location is outside of the district and not provided in the pull-down list, or that local criteria requires use of values from the older NOAA Atlas 2 instead of the more current NOAA Atlas 14. First, we will select user input from the pull-down list. Then we will enter the rainfall depths in the blue override cells here, so that they are consistent with the values used for the multiple subcatchments in CUHP. Now that we have provided all the required inputs, we can click the Run CUHP button. Keep in mind that this step is required to progress through the detention workbook and generate approximate detention volumes, but that we will be overriding the CUHP runoff results with the swim routed results later in this example. Next, we will quickly finish providing inputs for the basin worksheet so that we can move on to the outlet structure worksheet and focus on the hydrology overrides. In this example, we are going to select the water quality capture volume for zone 1. Keep in mind that the water quality capture volume equation is based on BMP type, watershed area, and watershed imperviousness. 
Since our area weighted watershed input values reflect the combined values for the three subcatchments, the water quality capture volume is accurate and does not need to be adjusted. For zone two, we will select excess urban runoff volume minus zone one. Again, since the excess urban runoff volume equation is based on watershed area, watershed imperviousness, and soil type percentages, the area weighted watershed input values accurately reflect the excess urban runoff volume for the three subcatchments. For zone three, we are going to select the approximate 100 year detention volume minus zones one and two. As you probably know from previous videos, the approximate 100 year detention volume simply provides a starting point for sizing the basin geometry. The actual 100 year detention volume required is calculated based on the 100 year inflow hydrograph being routed through the detention basin outlet structure. Since we will be overriding the default CUHP inflow hydrograph later, we should expect that this approximate 100 year detention volume will not be as accurate as it normally is. Now we can enter the basin geometry constraints to size the detention basin. I will enter typical basin geometry constraints consistent with the district criteria. Once all values have been entered, the workbook will calculate the stage area volume relationship. We have now completed the basin worksheet and are ready to move on to the outlet structure worksheet and provide the hydrology overrides. The first thing we want to do on the outlet structure worksheet is to override the default workbook hydrology with the swim rounded hydrology that accounts for multiple subcatchments and open channel conveyance. This ensures that we are sizing the outlet structure using the appropriate inflow hydrographs and allowable release rates. First, we will override the pre-development peak flow rates based on the existing conditions CUHP swim models that reflect an undeveloped land use condition. There may also be times when the user wants to match a historic condition that was already developed at a higher imperviousness than the default 2%. To enter the override pre-development peak flow rates, we need to scroll down to the routed hydrograph results table. I have already pulled the pre-development peak flows from the swim report files and entered them in a separate workbook. I will now just copy and paste them into the detention workbook. As you can see, once values are pasted into the override cells, they are highlighted to ensure that reviewers are aware of the modified pre-development peak flow rates. The 100-year value is approximately 6% higher than the default workbook calculated value. Next, we will override the inflow hydrographs based on the future conditions CUHP swim models that reflect the developed land use condition. To enter the override inflow hydrographs, we need to scroll up and over to the inflow hydrographs table. Here we can enter the 2 year through 500 year inflow hydrographs into the detention workbook. It is important to make sure that the time interval shown here is consistent with your override inflow hydrographs. In this example, the EPA swim hydrographs are recorded at a 5 minute time step so we don't need to make any adjustments. Earlier in the video I showed how to obtain the 100 year runoff hydrograph from the EPA software. I have already completed that task for the other design storms and copied the results into a separate workbook. I will now copy the swim hydrographs into this detention workbook. As you can see, once the hydrographs are pasted into the info hydrographs table, the headers for each column are highlighted to ensure that reviewers are aware of the modified info hydrographs. Also, if we go back and look at the routed hydrograph results table, you will notice that there are highlighted values in the row for user override inflow hydrograph volumes. This also helps to make it clear that the default inflow hydrographs have been overridden. The total 100 year inflow hydrograph volume is less than 1% different than the default workbook calculated value. Now that we have overridden the default CUHP hydrology, we can size the outlet structure. For purposes of this video, I will simply enter previously determined dimensions for the various components of the outlet structure. For a more detailed description of the iterative outlet sizing procedure, please see the other instructional videos available. In this example, the outlet structure will consist of an orifice plate to control the release rate of the water quality capture volume and excess urban runoff volume in zones 1 and 2. The zone 3 outlet type will consist of an overflow weir, drop box with grate, and an outlet pipe with restrictor plate. The bottom two rows of the orifice plate are sized to control the 40 hour drain time of the water quality capture volume. The top row of the orifice plate is sized to control the release rate of the excess urban runoff volume and to ensure the five-year design storm drains in less than 72 hours for compliance with the state statutes. 
Now I can size the overflow weir, drop box with grate, and outlet pipe with restrictor plate. The overflow weir and drop box consist of a square opening with a flat top and a type C grate. The circular outlet pipe will be set at the bottom of the micro pool, and the restrictor plate will control the 100 year release rate to 90% of pre development peak flows. The final step is to size the emergency spillway to pass storms in excess of the 100 year storm or if the outlet grate becomes clogged. When we look at the routed hydrograph results table below, we can see that the water quality capture volume drains in 40 hours. We can also see that the five year storm drains in 72 hours, which is in compliance with the state statutes. The 10 year through 50 year design storms are all controlled by the overflow weir and grate and are relatively close to pre-development peak flow release rates. The outlet pipe with restrictor plate releases the 100 year design storm at approximately 90% of the pre-development peak flow override value as intended. Interestingly, this release rate is approximately 100% of the default workbook calculated pre-development peak flow. Next, we can compare the maximum 100 year volume stored of 10.6 acre feet to the approximate detention volume from the basin worksheet of 11.8 acre feet. The actual detention volume required is approximately 10% less than the originally estimated by the workbook based on the user override info hydrographs and the increased allowable release rate. That concludes this design example. I hope this video is helpful in understanding how to enter and interpret the hydrology override values. Be sure to check out the other instructional videos available.